it just got to the point where I was, you know, I had no, no home, uh, really. I didn't want to be anywhere. I didn't even want to be around the people that I got the drugs with. It was very lonely and sad and uh, I couldn't stop. And at, at this point I was kind of out of options. My name is Matt Govin. I'm a recovering drug addict and this is my story. So I'm from Park City, Utah. Uh, I grew up with two great parents, uh, older brother and sister. I had a lot of friends um, from elementary school, middle school, uh, all the way into high school. It was a lot of fun. I did sports, played video games. A lot more people here as well, Scott, at least for the first half of this game. Andy Byers will throw, looks deep down the left side, has Matt Govan, touchdown! At this point, it was just so juvenile, so fun. Um, I was naive to the fact that anything bad could happen to a kid like me, just because there was no reason for anything bad to happen. So I kept my nose clean all of high school. Uh, I loved my self-image. I worked out, I, I hung out with a good group of friends, and I had goals. So grades and football, I was pretty much high school. And you know, for me, Partying at this time wasn't about getting high or, or, or actually feeling drunk. It was just the image, you know, feeling cool, looking cool, trying to be that guy um, that people remembered. I don't think that I ever thought I would end up uh, a drug addict, you know. Bad things don't happen to good kids that have a good family and a good upbringing. And I think that's me being really naive and uh, probably some, somewhat of the problem. Um, I just thought I was untouchable. At this point in college, my confidence and an image of myself was at an all-time high. Things started to change at that, at that point in time. Um, football didn't work out and I think that was a huge turning point for me is all my goals, you know, my purpose was to be a football player, at least I thought. So when that went away, I guess I had that, that void in my chest. I didn't really know what to do with my time. I hit more parties. Um, so I guess what I would say my, my drug use and drinking at this point would be more of like a community thing. Um, I'd only drink in, and smoke weed, maybe a little bit of cocaine and, uh, um, some psychedelics at this point, but it was always with friends. It was always with good friends. I was so free and open with with the party scene because it was just so fun at that point and, and no one was getting arrested, no one was dying, um, and no one was getting sent off to rehab. So it was kind of like any chance I had, I would go to a, you know, it uh, opened me up to one of the most terrifying moments of my life. Um, I was outside my apartment uh, with my dog, just taking him out to pee. And this guy came out and we started talking and he found out that I was not 21 and offered to give me some alcohol. And he's like, yeah, just come over here. My, my, my apartment is uh, in this building, which happened to be the same building as mine. So, so I went back and uh, to his room. And first thing I noticed was, damn, like, He's got fish tanks, he's got an awesome entertainment system, like this guy's doing really good for being maybe 27 years old. And uh, he started fishing through the cabinets for, for liquor so we could have some drinks. And I noticed that he could not find any alcohol. He could not find where the cups were. In fact, he just straight up gave up and was like, hey man, I don't know where any of the drinks are, but do you smoke? Yeah, I could just tell that there was something off with this guy. You know, he couldn't find anything in the house. So I was like, all right. So we go into his bedroom and he opens the door and I just see like four TV monitors and a couple laptops. And I'm like, what, what are you doing in here? So he sits down and he pulls out this glass piece and it wasn't, weed 
And I remember seeing him pack the bowl with this white, white powder or white something. And, and I just was like freaking out because that's not weed. He started to smoke and he blew out this huge cloud and he passed it over to me. And I was like, hey man, I, I'm sorry, but I don't do like hard drugs or anything. So I don't know if I gave you the wrong impression. And uh, he's like, no, it's, it's, it's cool. It's just a little bit of, a little bit of meth. Um, go on, try it. TV monitors, he just shook his mouse and they all popped on and it was just gay porn and I was freaking out. You know, I, I was really f scared that this guy was gonna rape me or stab me. He was, after he took that hit, he was bugging out. His hands were just all over the place. He quickly kind of went around me and was like, hey man, I'm not gay. Don't, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not gay. I just, can I suck? And I was freaking out at this point. You know, I had my dog on, on its leash and I was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. And I remember when he stood up over me and he, he locked the door and he reached down to grab me. As soon as he started to reach down to my pants, I just straight up pushed him, hit him, and I ran out of the door. It was terrifying, you know, and that was the first time I'd ever been around someone using hard drugs, using meth. It could just turn someone into a, a real nasty person. A little bit further down the road, it's so weird because um, I started to get even more into the drug scene even after that. Um, I can remember the first time that I did real more so hard drugs. I was at another party and you know, the kids are in the, a different room than everybody else. And they're, they're using pain, pain meds, somebody had a some way to get prescription pain meds and so we we would pop them and then later it turned to well i, I need to get that feeling faster you know because it was all about fast feelings and um so you know, i started to sniff them and and this was kind of like the change in 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 everything in my life was i think at this point uh, i made a decision to start going more so to those pills and to the cocaine rather than to the friends that were just drinking and, and smoking weed. And so fast and so quickly did it turn into, now I'm telling those you know people around me, friends that, oh no, I don't, I don't do, the, do the pills or the coke. No, I just drink and smoke and lying to the girlfriend. And, and I could just see it starting to consume me, you know? My, my priorities started to shift and change to, uh, messaging those guys like, hey, when, when are we getting together again? When, when are we getting high? And um, spending all my money, spending a lot more money, but I was hooked on it. And, uh, and sooner than later, um, I remember messaging somebody and saying, hey, do you have pills? And I got a response saying, I got black, I got white, I got green, I got blue, you know, it's just like a weird text. And I was kind of like, what's, what's black, you know? And he's like, come on by. So, uh, I went on by and, um, turns out that it was, they were, they had some heroin and, uh, I instantly was like, Hey, I'm not one of those guys. I don't, I, I do like drugs, but I don't do drugs like that. Like needles, all that stuff. That is not me. And he quickly, um, he quickly was like, Hey, we don't, you know, you don't have to put it in a needle, man. You can just smoke it. It's not harm. It's not, it's not bad like that. It's like really no risk. You just smoke it a little bit. And hearing that it was like a sigh of relief. Like, dude, if you're smoking it, it's not that bad. Right. I mean, it can't really hurt you that bad. So, um, I can just remember that feeling of, it just coming over me like like fingers down down your spine and shoulders and that first itchiness feeling and uh, it was like I could feel me but everything else around me was numb and I was just fucking hooked 
right there. It was like, this is what I want to do, you know? And from that point on, everything was second.